All right, guys, we are live. It's episode 245 of the Shooter's Mindset. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Co-host joining me today, Jennifer Seymour. What's going on, Jen? Hey, everybody. Now, owner, president of Roth Performance, maybe RCI, maybe the X-Rail dude. Um, I don't know. There's been a couple names thrown around uh, in, in recent years. Uh, Mark Roth joining us. What's going on, Mark? How's it going, guys? It's going good. So, little uh, backstory on this. This is a we had like two ghost episodes of the Shooter's Mindset. Uh, Mark happened to be one of them. Five years ago, we had him on the Shooter's Mindset show, where we had a. It was only if you were only tuning in live, you saw it because we deleted it because I think we were like the connection was terrible, and I think we were doing it on like iPhones, like iPhone threes back then or something. <laughs> so it never made it to the like the episodes because it was just, it was pretty bad. Um, but it's better. We said, yeah, we'll, we'll do another one. And then five years later, here we are for episode 245 of the shooter's mindset. And it's probably better that we got him on now anyway, because he's got a lot more products now, a lot more thing, obviously way more knowledgeable, doing way more things, uh, to shotguns and other gunsmithing work. So it's better that we talk about it now than then anyway. Right. Well, so, the uh, technology, the way it is, it's a little better at least. Yeah, and there's a, I think you know quad loading was fairly new, uh, or you know newish back then. So, you know people were still figuring out what's the best loading port cuts, and you know what how do people like this? So we would load weak hand, strong hand, and the different cuts for people who prefer one or the other. Um, so and a lot of new products, man. There's it's a lot of new divisions that popped up, stuff like that. So uh, and you know if you know. Mark's products, you know, he's, you know, some of the top people in the world that shoot three gun and shotgun matches and stuff like that run his stuff. All right. Or his modifications done to their stuff. So we'll get a little bit more into that here shortly here. We're going to get into show sponsors, folks over at uh, tactical shit. All right. Shop that tactical shit.com for all your tactical shit needs. We got a discount code coming from them later on in the show. Uh, who else we have? Uh, the folks over at GSL Technologies, all right? GSLtechnologies.com, the world's finest suppressors. That is GSL Technologies. Check them out if you're in the hunt or looking around for some suppressors to add to your arsenal. Uh, and the ShootersMindset.com, all right, for all the blogs. Keep uh, keep up with the Shooters Mindset live shows there. And also you can check out our shop all over at the ShootersMindset.com, okay? So for those who are unfamiliar with you, Mark, tell us a little bit more about yourself and kind of how you got involved in the shooting industry. Well, uh, most people know us as uh, X-Rail. It's uh, the first product that we created in 2007 area, and it's really what put us into the gun industry. It's a high-capacity magazine that you put on a normal shotgun capacity. Um, since then, we've evolved as the sport has evolved into a host of 100 different products, all of the competition. All right, how, I mean, were you, you were obviously shooting a lot before that competitively on, on a big stages, right? So did you, did you jump into it because you saw something needed to be done with these shotguns that you could do better? Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm kind of the person that uh, if I see a problem, I try to solve it been that way all my life and uh just used the creative method of it. i uh i've been that way all my life really and that's really how the x-rail system came about i was in a match one day and he was just kind of trying to describe to me how to get some more ammunition in a gun and and that's when it came into mind i'm like i think we could do that it took about a year and a half or two years to you know, really refine it and develop the product. So it's a product. And, uh, you know, so that product really put us on the map. But around 2010, 2011, people started to load putting and then quad loading. And the guns were really difficult to load at that point. So we started to play with how to pretty much evolved into what we have today far as products oh there we go jen you have any experience i mean obviously you, you have plenty of experience shooting three gun uh i don't know if you had any of mark's products 
I don't. I never got there. I have the poor man Stoger um, done in the garage version. <laughs> you know, I love the Stoger 2000. Oh, yeah. I just oh, bought it. <laughs> I bought an extended lifter and did it in the garage, you know. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> what can that I say? I'm poor. <laughs> that thing's still running for you, though? Yeah, it still runs. Yeah, we were, I think, uh, me and Mark, before you got in on the pre-show, we were talking about that shotgun and how well mine has held up over the time. And I've, we've done some some tweaks and stuff to it. But, I mean, it, it and hopefully, you know, knock on wood, because I've heard of people, oh, well, you, you know, you shoot, get about such and such amount of ammo through it, and you'll see it start messing up on you. There's always those type of stories out there. But I always are shooting, like, the cheapest, you know, Winchester, Birdshot, the Federal... Uh, any, anything that I can get for the cheapest at Walmart is what I run through and it runs like a champ. The only thing I had happen yeah. is uh, at that shotgun match, it started not, was it not feeding the next round in? I think that's what it was doing. And I was having to slam it on the ground to get the next one to go. And Mark actually hooked me up with a shotgun spring. Um, so yeah, that's, I would love to have it worked on and like have it be a smoother loading gate and all that because i know that they're really smooth when they're done the right yeah. way but yeah, who, yeah, did, I'm, I'm who did who did the who did the poor job did you didn't do that in your kitchen or anything did you poor job? uh no actually james casanova did it in his garage <laughs> Sweet. yeah man i don't know that i haven't heard much of james recently in the, in the last couple of years no i think he kind of got off the kinda, map kinda, a little bit kind of chilled out a little bit yeah but yeah. hey that's a little vintage port you could say hey you you put that thing up for sale you'd be like this was done by james casanova right he's no longer really playing the game this is an antique now give me five thousand then we can <laughs> buy we can buy uh you know whatever we whatever is the hottest thing mine's one of the old ones too that like you could only open the port on one side a little bit you know the other one you could open up but the one side only a little bit because the serial number's right there so you couldn't yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the same one that I have too. Yeah, the serial number is right next to the port uh, on those on those Stogers. I mean, you, you, I mean, I think I, mine has a you know great work done to it, but I'm sure you can cut a little higher if you if that serial number wasn't there. Which they moved with the later models, I believe. So, if I had all the money in the oh, world, no. I would have a Roth shotgun, a Benelli by Roth. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, that's what that's what everybody's running, right? So. <laughs> One thing for sure, we're not cheap. <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I was scout. But, I was definitely scouting the website before uh, we got on there, and there's tons of options that you have available for multiple shotguns, not just Benelli's and Stogers and stuff like that. Uh, we're really the only house that acts to pretty much every shotgun. Um, you have a lot of the other companies that will do a particular brand, and they specialize in that. It's actually created a system for pretty much all of the main shotguns within the competition arena. Yeah. Uh, recently here, uh, you announced kind of across across all the platforms that you changed the company name uh, to Roth Concepts, right, or Roth Roth Performance. Uh, why was that? Why that? Why that happened? Well, uh, that actually evolved from. Uh, on me for a number of years to, to rebrand and his point to it was that him and we've been good friends for a long time he had no idea what RCI meant or why we were calling our company X-Rail since we had all these other products it, through his encouragement he's like you should really have your name as part of the business because that everybody knows who you are you know just like Randy Luth you know stocks you know when he started that up after uh selling off to remington cpms you know he went through so what do i want to be able to be recognized as and who they are it just made sense so the rebranding especially when we announced our our new receiver it seemed to do it company we're really a performance company so roth performance mm. it is yeah, you're a little laggy, but yeah, that, that totally makes a lot of sense. Because I, I mean, I'm taking a good, good guess here. Was it 
RCI was it just Roth Concepts Innovation or something like that? Was that is that what it was called or did I get it? Correct. Yeah. All right. So yeah, figured I and I I really just put that up on the fly, but you, I really you know I knew you guys as yeah. the dudes the X Rail guys right the people who put out the X Rail and that was it. Now obviously I knew you did shotguns and other things. And if anybody, I mean, I think you have the best location at SHOT Show, of all of SHOT Show. Your booth is in the perfect spot. I, I don't know, you don't have to move up to, the, you know, these big, huge Glock booths on the main floor. If you go on the, if you're on the main floor, right, or the bottom floor, you have to see the X-Rail, you know, the, the Roth Performance booth. It's just, it stares right you right next to the in. SHOT Show store. Yeah, it's right next to the shot. And even if you take a hard right and you just go down the first aisle, it's still right in your face. So, it, it you know, even if you have no intention to really stop by there, you're going to see it. So I don't, yeah. I, you shouldn't move. They've offered, they've offered to move us to the first floor a number of times. And I told them they were not, I said, I won't give up that spot. Yeah. It's just too valuable. Yeah, it's, too, it's, it's definitely the perfect spot. I mean, I don't know how many times I swing by. It's just even just passing it. It really is because anything you go to downstairs, you walk by y'all. I mean, anything, you know, <laughs> yeah. like I always end up stopping by there and y'all are always busy. Mm -hmm. Pretty much have to walk, walk by the booth. Yeah. For the show on the wind. <laughs> yeah, there's no, there's no choice. You have to, there's no avoiding it. Unless you just Correct. totally, unless you just totally don't don't go on that floor, period, and you're just on the on the up, <laughs> upstairs or other floors, just the only way you miss it. Um, what else we have here? Um, uh, I want to get actually, if you guys are just tuning in, any live questions? If you're watching on the YouTube side of things, top right hand corner, you can kind of plug in your questions over there. I'll snatch those up. Also, we have a post that went up on Facebook. Um, if you prefer to use Facebook, you can plug a comment in there, and we'll grab it and get it over to Mark uh, live throughout the show. I just opened up the YouTube side here in the chat. It says, uh, Mike Bell says, hey, guys, and Jen. Hey, Mike. Hey, Thanks for hey watching, I Mike. saw your post, Mike. No hey, Mike. excuses this year. You better get back to shooting. I better see you at the range. Mm hmm There we go. Oh, uh, yeah, so if you've got any questions, plug them in there. We will grab them and get them over to Mark throughout the show, all right? Uh, for years, you've done custom work on Benelli's. I've noticed you uh, don't offer a lightened Benelli bolt option or really kind of any lightened bolt for the shotguns, right? How do you feel about lighten, lightened versus non-lightening the bolts? Is it is it a big deal? Uh, lightened bolts to me are more of a cosmetic thing than an actual function. Uh, but for me, I just look at it, thought it would work better lightened, they'd lighten it. And when they came out with the speed bolt for the Vinci, about three Three years back, they actually added a tungsten weight to it. They made the bolt heavier to run faster. So, um, in my experience, I really think difference or a noticeable difference in lightening the bolt. So, for myself, I believe I'm a, I want to give my customer the best value for something. That's adding, and I couldn't prove any difference with a lightning bolt or a factory bolt. So, I'm not going to offer it. I don't. I don't want to just take people's money for nothing. Yeah, and it does seem to be quite a bit of work involved in lightening the bolt on some of these shotguns. I mean, some of them are really tricky. Got all the you know flutes in them, and and then they come in some fancy coating after you cut them all up, and they look really good. Obviously, I don't have any experience with lighting. You know, I just always ran the factory style bolts on my shotguns, but they do look cool. So I think there was a post that went up. I uh, remember on social media, I was looking at this post and it just popped in my head to, when I was putting together the questions on, on why don't you offer that? And that's because you obviously you didn't, obviously you didn't notice the difference. All, you actually find in your experience that the factory bolt is actually more reliable than a lightened one is, right? Correct. Um, if you understand an inertia drive system, the, uh, the weight of the bolt is actually what stores the energy in the ID spring. When the gun goes off, that's what unlocks the bolt face and then shoots the gun back or shoots the bolt, bolt back. So if you lighten that, you're basically taking a little bit away from the ability for that energy to be stored in that ID spring. People like to use for that by putting a lighter recoil spring in, but you're taking from one and giving to another. So it's really Robin Peter to pay Paul. It's all physics. It all has to work together. 
So you either use a lighter load. It um, goes back to kind of like we were talking about before the show, when you tweak on a gun, like a, even an AR, you know, a gas, a cadmium bolt, or, you know, they all, work, they all have to work together in unison. If you're not willing to put the time into figuring it out, it's just, I don't see any real back how you added a lot of bolts testing. And, uh, you know, Patrick Kelly and I would do it way back in 2012, 13. We would light them up as much as we, they just were less reliable when they were lighter. Now there's might be a magical number of how to lighten it, but really, I, why would I take $150, $200 for something that wasn't a noticeable difference? Yeah, definitely agreed. I think someone's going to... Also, that's that, obviously this says a lot about your company that some people will just do that out to add, you know, just to get a couple extra dollars in a shotgun mod. Uh, but I mean, so you you have the folks saying that, oh, well, it works in an AR, but there's different components in an AR when you're putting a lightweight bolt carrier group in it that you now have gas. It's not an inertia driven system, right? So it kind of just Correct. doesn't go hand in hand. And do you think something like that will work in more of those gas operated style shotguns versus inertia driven? Does it make, did you notice it makes sense there? Um, for me, in my experience, and I've played with all of them, I don't think it really matters. Um, so you can get a, you know, a few tenths off your splits. Uh, you know, I mean, the fastest running shotgun out there, I think, is the FNH SLP. I'll run a nine. There's not a person in the world that's going to acquire targets and shoot targets at nine tenths of a split. The fastest guys are running 14s and 17s. Right. So, and that's like, that's Jerry on an array that's, you know, poppers stacked next to each other 10 feet wide. It's just those scenarios about in competition that often. So, why not just go for reliability versus, you know, feet on split? Yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, yeah, reliability is going to be key in the game we play. That's for sure. Um, since then, what have we? Uh, there's a lot of new kind of uh, shotgun companies that are competing to be to kind of knock the the Benelli kind of off its throne per se. You know, you got the Breda, you got the what else? The Browning A5s, a lot more of those style shotguns. I mean, there's a couple more that I'm probably missing. Um, do you still do you still feel that the Benelli is kind of the king of the competition shotguns? Um, I, I don't. Or did you ever feel that, that way? <laughs> um, yeah, good question. I don't. I don't know that Benelli's ever been the king per se, because there's a lot of shotguns that are better than a Benelli. Things, but when you look at, there's two different philosophies in my mind about a shotgun. What's a good shotgun? One, you have gas system and inertia drive. Gas system is all about uh, running light loads, the versatility of the type of loads you can roll. They hit softer. They're not as heavy or heavy hitting. An inertia drive gun is definitely going to be a lighter gun that has more recoil impulse to it. The non-gas system is low maintenance. Everybody likes to have a Benelli or a Breda or a, a system like that because you don't have to. To clean it every say I'm 930 or a Versamax or something like that, you tend to have to do a little bit more to that. Um, and there's also you have a, a gas system weighs more. So for people that are smaller, it's a little bit harder for them to do a some gun that weighs a pound and a half, two pounds heavier for a 30 round jungle run, per se. <clears throat> so but Ellie really has been the gold standard, I'll say the gold standard, of our competition shooting sports on that end of it. Everything kind of cycles back to Benelli is after years. Yeah. I mean, because you always hear, I mean, you always hear, I mean, I don't know. I heard with the Breda that, I don't know, I don't know how what the truth is was that some folks worked at Benelli and they branched off and then they thought they can make a better thing and then here goes their offering, right? But there was folks that initially worked at Benelli. I don't know how true that is. I've heard that. Who knows? And then you say the M3000 and the Stoger is kind of a sister company of the Benelli. So it's kind of like everybody's – it's kind of like that that Glock pistol that everybody kind of – they took it, they look at it, they put it on the desk, and they're like, all right, 
this is what's awesome right now. How can I beat this or try to make it as awesome as this, right? And there's a lot more offerings uh, today uh, at a little bit more affordable price. Maybe the Beretta and the Benelli's are kind of close. You know, you can get a Stoker pretty cheap, but it's not exactly a Benelli, so you're throwing it up there. But uh, well, I think I, I think the Stoker, uh, if you look at an all-around on shotgun for ease of maintenance and for reliability for cost. The Stoger M3000 is really probably the best value at this point, at least through our shop, because you can pretty much put every bell and whistle on a Stoger. We would put into a Benelli and it's with a gun that's maybe a pound heavier for almost a thousand dollars cheaper. So, so what all coming into the sport? Great value. So what all if you had somebody that was like. Uh, coming into three gun and wanted to know what all they should do to their shotgun. Like I know what I did to mine, the rigged version, not the custom version. But uh, if you had somebody that wanted to really get their shotgun up to par, whether it be a Stoger or a Benelli, what all would you recommend them getting for three gun? Uh, with if, if they're brand new in the sport, I'm going to steer them towards the Stoger. If I've been in the sport for a long time, go ahead. But what all mods would you say are the entry you need to get done probably initially on your shotgun? Really? Like you said in the beginning, all you did was do some port work and a tube on your gun. It depends. I mean, there's people that have sick money, and then there's people that just don't have any money because they're sick. Of, you know, I mean, they, you know, they just want to be, they just want to shoot, right? Or they have kids. Mm -hmm. So, hey. <laughs> Yeah, we we pay close attention to the customer. Um, if somebody calls, I'll just try to sell them. We try to understand where they're at in life, what they want, why they're getting in the sport, and where they want to go. We can tailor a budget to that, so you can spend, you know, just do port work and get a tube on your gun, and you can be happy. You just need to load it well. Now I'm take time and you can always add those things in later mainly the port work bill so mm. somebody could basically call you and say I have X amount of dollars that I can spend what do you think I should do and you can like customize what they should get done absolutely absolutely I would rather build a customer for life than try to sell someone a product yeah that's yeah that's a good that's a that's an awesome way to look at it because there is, I don't know, at least with me, there is uh, obviously some loyalty in in a company. If I've contacted such and such and I got excellent customer service, a good turnaround time, the dude was honest, or people that worked there were honest. And, you know, even though there might be a new up-and-coming company with some fancy-looking guns, I'm still probably going to always go to that company that treated me well and... I got the performance of the gun that I needed from that company, said company, right? Um, Correct. Not a big, not a big fan of venturing off because this is the latest and hottest new. I don't know, maybe a hyped company coming up is is a good word. They they pop up sometimes they last, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they have a good product, sometimes they don't. Sometimes it's just all Gucci'd up, but it's not really the testing and reliability is probably not there per se. So it just makes right. sense. What else we got here? Uh, Mike Bell, uh, what's Mark's thoughts on the Beretta 1301 shotgun? It, the Beretta 1301 is a great shotgun. Uh, we do port, port work on it, and you can put an extension tube on it. And for us, what we do in-house, that's pretty much all we do to it. But it it is a very good gun statured people, smaller frame people, uh, females, juniors. A lot of juniors start out with the 1301, and a lot of females start out with it because it kicks. It's really cool, and it has a short length of pull on it right from the factory. That seems to be the biggest problem with uh, smaller stature people is having the length of pull in the gun set of them. I can't say anything bad about uh, it. Cool. Yeah, the quality of the parts are excellent. It's Italian made. I mean, they're going to last, though. It's a good gun. Yeah, I agree. That was a. 
I was drug out to a local three gun match with a buddy Eric Leopold, who at the time had a Beretta thirteen oh one that he he was running, and that was the one that I ran. Was was kind of like the one that I ran, the first one that I ran in a three gun competition. And then what did I play? I played with a couple shotguns since then. I think got the FN SLP, and no, there was nothing wrong with that. I just think I sold it to get something different at the time, and then I ended up with the Stoker and kind of never. And I do have a Benelli M2 Tactical, but it's pretty much just sitting that stock right now that I just happen to pick up. But and it has a pistol grip. It's kind of like very few people run a pistol grip and that 18 inch or was that I believe it's an 18 inch barrel in three gun. I'm sure there's a couple people that do, but that's the version that I have just laying around right now. Well, there's, there, there's a number of people that, I mean, Taryn runs all the time, or he used to anyways. I don't know if he does anymore, but with quad loading the way it is now, the pistol grip just kind of gets in the way. Yeah. So yeah, I know. a lot with the pistol grip, and then they're like, I'm going to switch to a traditional grip because it's not really helping. So. Yeah, I know Taryn, and I think John McLean, if he's still running one of the only two that comes to mind that I know of that – that are competing with one and still can, you know, are on that kind of pretty, pretty good, you know, high level as far as I, competing. Yeah. I never understood how they quad loaded with that pistol grip there. <laughs> Neither did I. I, I mean, I some of them do it. it, but I can't. Yeah, they do it quick too. Oh yeah. 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 And I, uh, definitely the, the pistol grip made sense before quad loading. Cause um, when you were just throwing them the old, the old and the kind of the old slow way, which I can't even do, it, it made total sense, right? Well, yeah, because um, you can hold the gun up easier. Yeah, because you can hold the gun up easier, but now it's kind of like, eh, I don't know. But it can be done. So if you have one of those shotguns, don't don't go run and sell it because we said so. Uh, practice with it. Do a poor job from – send it over to Mark. He'll do a poor job for you. Throw a T-ball on that thing and practice, and I'm sure you'll get quick with it or quicker than – Stock. Yeah. Dog too is fat. Yeah. Uh, what else we have here? We got a couple more. Thanks for the questions over there, Mike Bell, for uh, throwing those in there. Helpful. Uh, you, since then, I mean, obviously your your uh, Breda and Benelli receivers. Okay, this was this was kind of a huge deal when it was announced. Uh, what features do they have, and why would someone upgrade to that? Well, right now. The whole receiver project came about two or three years ago. We were doing so many in the shop that I realized that I can't physically. And uh, there's a lot of wear and tear on your elbows when you do the port work, things like that. So I started to try to figure out because technically if we sell one of our signature series guns, it's our receiver. It's our gun. The ATF requires us to stamp it a all that kind of stuff. Well, if it's my gun, why don't I just make my gun? Um, and I'd been on manufacturers for a long time. Remington, the Versamax competition, um, you know, the M3K, you know, we do the Benelli competition gun for Benelli. And I was wondered why they don't just do it at the factory. And their response would be because it's a really small market. And to me, why wouldn't didn't you want to be a to load your gun easier when you've got gloves on? So it just didn't make sense. So I went on the mission of putting everything I would ever want into a roof, switch it out. So that's what we have today. It's a really cool product. It's been really, really well received. We do through a feature series. We buy guns from Benelli. We put that receiver on it. Now we have a surplus receiver that has never been touched. So... So there's a lot of benefits to having that receiver. And not only is it universal to the Breda or the Benelli M2, it has features in it that you normally would have to have a gunsmith put in, like uh, the ability to put an ethos latch in it. Um, that one right here. So the channel, the channel in here for the latch, you want to use an ethos latch, which is a two-part articulating latch like this. Stoger. That's why you're so well. It articulates like that. With, with this receiver, you can just put it in. And it's a threaded latch pin to put in, so it's really easy to change. 
So I just looked at it from how can I get our quad vacuum port into this gun and, and not have a gun. And uh, so it took about a year, and so far it's been very well received. So as a customer, Janet, <laughs> all you is an Ellie. You can buy one at Gander Mountain, and you get the receiver kit. You take all, all the parts off, our receiver on it. You take your old receiver, set it aside. Go play three gun for a couple of years, and when you're done with it, take it off, put your original one on, bring it to Gert, and then you got that receiver you can sell to your buddy that still shoots three gun. So there's there's a number of benefits to having that receiver. And for me, I can just I don't have to wear out my elbows and do all the grinding and suck fairy dust in all day long. Yeah, definitely. Uh, if you guys want uh, more details on some of the products we're talking about here, the website is rothperformance.com. Okay, just click on the receiver at the top there. They are ranging anywhere between $500 and $600. It depends on what you get with it. Obviously, if you want a red color, blue color, yellow color, or whatever, there's a little bit of a slight upcharge for the colors, but for the most part, $500 and you're getting kind of something that's ready to rock. Um, if you want, there's some that have a Picatinny rail option. You can put, if you're running a red dot on your shotgun, an open division or something like that, they have options for that also. So, I mean, for that, I mean, you're already, you got the money. You're already forked up the money in these shotguns in the Breda or the Benelli. I think $500 is, is a, is not much to spend on a receiver that comes already tricked out like that. And you're almost essentially just slap a tube on it at that point and, and go running. Pretty much. I looked at it. I looked at it this way. The work that you would have, what you would pay me to do the port work on your, on your gun and have the capture follower system vacuum port like we have, you're going to pay me $575. That's ba That's the basic start out, right? You can get this response receiver that had and then some without having to you know have your gun in our shop for six to eight weeks you can get it sent to your local ffl do the paperwork take all the parts off your gun put them on and in a week you're out and ready running so i mean i don't, I, I don't see how it could be any more beneficial than doing that you can take the front end of a and put it on your gun in the back half of a benelli m2 and you can run two different style guns so they're that interchangeable Boom, there you go. Jen, have you seen these uh, receivers, just the receiver itself? They're pretty tricked out. I have not. I've heard about them. I was very interested whenever I heard about them, but I have not gotten to play with one. I'd love to. Again, it just all the reasons we just point out, six to eight weeks, yada, yada. I mean, you're gonna, and you're also going to pay more. Unless you want something that's unique that the receiver doesn't have that Mark can do, I'm sure – then, then it don't make sense. But otherwise, I don't see why you wouldn't. Especially um, if you're going save with money. Yeah. Well, especially if you're going with the Benelli route or the Breda route. The, the receiver itself that we have, the XB3G, will last forever. You're not going to have to do anything to it. It's not going to wear out the shoot through it like a lot of the guns that are have work done to them will have happen over time. And then when you're done with it, you just pull it off and you can sell it to your buddy. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's a real part on that end. I remember when you started those and I thought it was a brilliant idea. <laughs> yeah. If, we yeah only... if anybody else is doing it already or at some level. So. Yeah, well, there, you know, there's a, there, a lot of factory, you know, shocking companies and kind of goes across with, with all kind of uh, firearms is they'll say it's they'll come out with competition ready or hey this is a three gun ready shotgun well they're never they're not they're never quite three gun ready or competition ready I mean they're getting better at it you could definitely see uh, a lot of them you know these companies are definitely listening to you know the consumers and stuff like that you know even as something as the gen 5 glock even though you know we, we can still nitpick and why they're still coming with the plastic sides and we can say that type of thing but you can kind of see that the front cocking serrations are are coming on the guns now they're flaring up the mag well you know they're doing a lot of little things that kind of competition guns are we need and just they're, simple well they're not doing it yet because i mean just like mark said the market 
we feel like competitive shooting is a huge market because we feel like there's a lot of us, right? Mm -hmm. We all have 5,000 friends on Facebook because of competitive shooter friends, right? Right. Uh, so we all feel like it's a big market, but when you look at the bigger picture, like hunters are a lot bigger market than three gun shotgun competitors. So I think that's why the big companies don't, I think you kind of have to have that niche a little bit like Mark does, you know, and he provides a service for us competitive shooters. Now I wish they would all, you know, I, cater I, to us, but I, I think I that's why, because we're such that, a small it, percentage of it. Right. But if you're going to, if you're going to market it as a three gun ready shotgun, all right, you're catering to that niche competition shooting market. Why not do well, well, if they all did that, then I guess Mark wouldn't have much business. So don't do it. All right. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll send, send over to Mark. That's what I was about to say. He doesn't mind that they don't do it. <laughs> I, I don't mind. I don't. I wouldn't mind if they did it because people will still. I mean, it's kind of like uh, you know the next supercar. I mean, you st you're not going to do anything about the next supercar, but you still know the Ferrari Diablo, and so it it. Sometimes, like you're saying, it, uh, Anthony, they try to make something competition ready, but you got to remember hunters or waterfowlers that want to get into three gun, they have no clue what it means. They just see competition ready and they buy it. And Remington yeah. don't care. But companies like big companies like Remington and all the companies, they don't care. It's about numbers to them. So a lot of these people end up buying these guns and then find out after. Afterwards, I mean, I still got to do more work to them. Um, yeah, so mm -hmm. that's where that's why we have our receiver because because for years I've been just doing this from the factory. It doesn't it doesn't cost that much more to do the, these things. They're simple machining operations. You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense to me. Well, there we have it. Uh, we're gonna move on here to discount corner here. Uh, try to save you some money from some great companies who support the Shooter's Mindset Show. Jen, you usually start us off. What do you have? Yep. Speaking of shotguns, you can get 10% off at carbonarms.us on shotgun shell caddies. So you can quad load with one of Mark's awesome shotguns. Um, you can get shotgun extension tubes. You can get ratchet belts. Um, they have just a slew of things on there. So go look at carbonarms.us and use the code TSM10. You can also get 10% off at the Shooter's Mindset store with the code GEN, TSM10. Uh, so that'll get you 10% off. And we have um, some TTI stuff, some Gear Nation t-shirts. So go check out the website and see what all we have. You can also get 10% off at Under Industries on jerseys. And he has a special going right now that's going through SHOT Show. I think it's actually through like February 1st or something like that. But you can get two jerseys and a jacket and a tech shirt for $199, which is amazing because the jacket will also have your sponsors on it. It's all the same artwork. So whatever artwork you do for the jersey would be for the other two shirts, I mean, for the tech shirt and for the jacket also. But it's a great deal because then when it's a really cold match, you can put a jacket on and you still have your sponsors on. It's not like you're covering it all up. So go check them out at under industries on Facebook. You can check them out and send them a message on there and mention the shooter's mindset. You can get 10% off. Yeah. Boom. I like that deal. I know when I, every year we were switching around logos and we would try to get them in. We would try to hurry them in before shot show because we wanted to rock around the show with our new, our new, you know, sponsors on our Jersey and, you know, companies always got really backed up at around that time too. Um, but I, man, I remember paying, Way like if I wanted those three items, I was paying more than what they're they have those three on sale for. Two jerseys is normally two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're usually a hundred dollars jersey. So then, basically, you're getting a jacket and a tech shirt for free. So it's a great deal. Check them out. Yeah, and then that is a good, that is a good deal. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then you know I, I remember ordering one of those shooter jackets with all the logos on it. They're like, dude, what are you doing with that in Florida? I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. We don't need it, but you travel to a state where it's cold as shit. Like if you travel, I remember I used to travel to like Massachusetts at to Smith and Wesson facility to shoot their, their IDPA match. Dude, it was like 27 degrees out there. You know, like that's unheard of. Cold. That's, that's unheard yeah. of cold for me. You know what I mean? I've never, never seen that type of cold. So, 
that jacket, boy, I was loving that jacket at that time. And everybody was jealous yeah. and everybody wanted one. So. Well, the thing that I've worn more than my jerseys this year is because um, Under also does uh, hoodies. And my hoodie has all of my sponsors on it. I wear that hoodie more than anything at the matches because, I mean, we do have some hot matches in the dead of summer. We're in the south. But I'm cold natured. And it is cold. It's been mm -hmm. cold for the last two months here. Yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah. So it's under U N D R Industries. Check them out. Sweet deal. Uh, discount codes on my end. The folks over at Tactical Shit Shop. Tactical Shit. Com. TSM ten saves you ten percent off their website. Uh, man, they have AR parts, clothing, you know, tactical gear, all that type of stuff. It's kind of your one stop shop. Check out Shop. Tactical Shit. Com. If you're in the St. Peter's, Missouri area, you can stop by the retail space. Yell TSM10 at the cashier. They'll save you 10% off your purchase, all right? Uh, lastly, the folks over at Terran Tactical Innovation, TerranTacticalInnovation.com, TSM10, saves you 10% off there for all their products. UMTactical.com, TSM10, also good at UMTactical.com. Mark, anything that you have, kind of any specials, discount codes that you know of coming up or currently running? No, not, not, not offhand. I know we'll probably have a Christmas special, but that's usually a yeah, so uh, check out all the social media from uh, Roth Performance. And if you're kind of in the hunt for something from them, uh, stay tuned for that holiday Christmas kind of special coming on there. Or you can just send them an email, say, um, I saw you're on the Shooter's Mindset. Hook it up. Hook it up with a candy bar or something in the <laughs> box. I'm sure uh, we can probably make that happen. Uh, what else we have here? Any any live pop up on your end, Jen? Or no? Nope, nothing live. Uh, so Mark, we're in the off season. Obviously, there's not much stuff going on. Obviously, some a lot of companies like yourself probably preparing for shot show, etc. But as far as off season practice and gear preparation, what do you do? What do you think is a good practice right now? Wisconsin, so there's not really much outdoor practice going on right now. Uh, you mentioned 26 <laughs> degrees that way, so <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not really doing that. I don't. I, yeah. I'm not a big believer in. Dry, I can't say I'm not a big believer in dry fire. I just don't do it. Bro. But uh, I don't really have an off season. The, the the sport has grown so much that you can pretty much go to matches all year round. Now I'm getting ready for one in February. Mm -hmm. I'll have shot show obviously, but then I got February, March, and it just starts all over again. So I don't uh, have a practice regiment or three gun per se. So there you go. Oh uh, man, yeah, I can. You know, obviously you in Wisconsin, you you know, twenty six is probably hot for you over there, right? That, that was the high today. So. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it is what it is. I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure if you're dedicated enough. I know uh, Josh, what is it, uh, Freilich or Frolich, or I always mess up the dude's name, but we know he's always in, in the cold, dry fire, yeah, doing no. live fire shit. I'm like, dude, that dude, yeah. if if you want it that bad, all right, and you want to be on top of your game, go out go there and it. keep right, Go hit go it, man. It. Because that dude. He's is, out there in the snow practicing. I'm like, ooh. Yeah. I want to be a good shooter, but I don't want it that bad. <laughs> he's not pick, he, he doesn't pick up his brass. <laughs> when he shoots in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> he just leaves it, waits till it all thaws out, and then he has like yep. this he goes out and harvests all of his winter brass. It's gotta be Correct. a lot because he's out there all the time shooting in the yeah. snow. I'm like, oh my God, that that, that white stuff is snow, Josh, go inside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't get me wrong, I do go out and shoot. Um I just don't have a regiment. Usually when I'm going to the range at this time of year it's setting up gear for next year or a specific type of a gun for a specific type of a match. Yeah. That, uh, I don't go run around in the snow. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you do anything as far as like looking over your gear? Obviously this, I mean, if you're really into it, this is something you should pay attention year long. So it shouldn't be just off season. Let me strip down all my gear and make sure there's nothing wrong with it or anything like that. But is there something you, is there like a regimen for that? Like no one wants their shotgun or pistol or anything to go down in a major match. Is there kind of something you worked up that doesn't to make sure that well, I have happen? I have my own I have my own 
uh, mental checklist that I've I have acquired over the years. It's not actually a paper checklist, but so many times, and once you hit on something that works well for you, you tend to fall into that mindset right at uh, you know a few days before your match, your match where you start addressing all the gear, the ammunition, the belts, the holsters, you know, making sure everything's tight, fasteners are tight, clean, and oiled up the way it's supposed to be, and then you get into that that portion of going out, making sure you have the right uh, round count for the match that you're going to, uh, patterning your gun again if you need to, and, and rechecking zeros. Um, it, I think most people that shoot at a high level level have a checklist, whether it's a mental checklist or whether it's a physical checklist, there's a routine that you kind of get into when it's, you know, the week before the match, whether you're traveling that weekend before you're, you're pretty much crunching, you know, to get all your gear set up. Um, so you, you know that it's not. And there you go. You kind of broke up a little bit on the last thing there, but. There you go. As far as uh, off-season and gear prep, uh, what else we have here? Um, you seem to – what's this battle you have going on with the rope? Is this a CrossFit thing or just like a self-challenge? It, it's not a CrossFit thing. <laughs> but um, I signed up for a match. It's called the Tactical Games, and I heard about this this event – about a somewhere in the June area, I was at uh, uh, Ian Harrison's place at a recoil magazine there, and he they sponsored this event, and it looked pretty interesting because it's really like CrossFit with guns, is what it looked like a tactical thing. So this fall, I was going to sign up for one of the matches, and uh, I couldn't make it, and Carla heard a friend to it because it was close to her now that she went to one i felt like i got to do one so there's a match in february you got to do a bunch of lifting and dragging and pulling and climbing and then you shoot a couple of guns in between so i i'm probably going to torture myself and i i think I, I i conned a bunch of three gunners in to come down there and carry me off pretty much what it is so <laughs> there you go hey but you're prepping most people who, yeah. I don't think I can climb that rope. I never attempted to climb a rope, so I'm pretty sure I can't make it to the top. You know that one of the things they always make you do is climb a rope with your uh, your kit, 15-pound chest plate carrier, your mags, your rifle, and your pistol. you got to climb it three times, 15 feet. No yeah. way. I couldn't do it. I can barely... I can all think I could climb a rope with just with my body weight. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was hard the first time I did that. Now I can do it. I, I can do it okay. I'm still playing with different types of shoes and things because shoes make a big difference climbing a rope on yet. But it, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I like physical challenge matches. I've always done the hard as hell matches, blue ridge. Those really test you. Uh, on the physical aspect of it. As long as I can still do that, I'd like to do it. So this one seemed to be a natural fit. And I've got, there's, there's a number of three gunners that are going to go to this match. And most of the people at these matches are uh, either former group members or, or they're still in retirement at some point. They're military service or SWAT. And, uh, but a lot of them may not be the best marksmen. So, mm -hmm. well, we can shoot but can we actually make it through the physical part? So it'll be interesting. I'm going to continue to do stuff on it, show my progress, and see what happens. Um, there you go, Jen. You had a question. Did you go and pull from the next? Uh, oh, did I? Did you want me to? Sure. <laughs> um, so I can't imagine doing all that and shooting, but good luck for y'all on that i want to see you lots should, of videos of that you should do that mammoth sniper challenge thing they're rocking like 30 miles with all their gear like yeah, i don't know if bad, i can huh? do that it's, yeah, it's were, a you lot were doing the, you were doing the get in shape thing and then you're a good shooter right so i thought that was up not in that good of shape 
that it's <laughs> it's literally like they're the people that I know that are behind it are like, wow, this is going to be a lot. Like, it's a lot of rucking. Um, so, Mark, what kind of upcoming products or matches or projects do y'all have coming up? I know you got Shot Show next month. What else is on the agenda coming up? Um, right now, it's just getting everything ready for Shot Show. We got Christmas, the holidays, kind of slow things down a little bit. Um, Going go to go down to Florida, down by you, Anthony, there for to Fort Myers over Christmas. Take a little vacation with the family. Um, get back and get everything together for for uh, shots for that. Then this uh, tactical games match is uh, towards the end of February, and then the weekend after that is the Rock Hard match at Rock Castle. At the tactical games, I'll make it to the Rock Hard match. So, um, so it's just trying to get everything done. New products. It's uh, pretty much the receiver for that uh, small stuff that we'll announce at Shot Show, but. Just that crunch time now, getting everything ready for Shot Show. And what's your, I know we know where your booth is, but what's your booth number for anybody else that's going? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's 2807. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's 2807. Yeah, I mean, I tell you what, if you, if you take a taxi or an Uber, they drop you right off in front of the sands. You walk through the, the glass doors. You make a left and you go, and it's right there. You can't miss you it. You go through the old. You yep. go to the left. <laughs> We're right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They literally are right next to the Shot Show store downstairs. Correct. Yeah, so there yeah. you go. Look, look for the Shot Show store if uh, if all fails, and then you'll find uh, the Roth yeah. booth. Uh, We're the only right cool there. booth on the lower. Booth on the lower <laughs> level next to the Duck Cult and purses. <laughs> Y'all have literally the best booth because, like, literally when you get in there, it's so crowded and there's, like, a backup, and I'm always in a hurry to get everywhere. And so I'll, like, zip through, so I end up, like, zipping through right by the other side of your booth, if that makes sense, to cut through because I'm not Definitely. very patient. I'm not patient. So you'll, it, like, you could probably stand there and count. Like, I don't know, maybe I can throw a dollar at you every time I run by. You get rich because I, like, zip by y'all's yep. booth all the time down that little back side of it. I, mm -hmm. I wouldn't get, I wouldn't get rich. I'm hardly ever there. My wife is, is usually the one on doing it and that's where she gets to see all her friends all the time. I'm I'm there probably two hours a day. So Yeah. I do see you by there uh every once in a while and then I'll then the next time I swing by you're not there. So it's it's yeah. one of those things. But if if you're running around shot enough You'll be by. You'll swing by that booth enough times that I'm sure you'll catch them. One of one out of the fifty times you swing past it. So yeah, so there I, you go. Time at the booth this year. I do have a lot of projects that I'm working on that I have to, you know, take care of the appointments with for that. But I would like to. Spend, I do miss a lot of people by not being there, but mm -hmm. you know it's shot show, so you've got to go and do your thing. So yeah. it's kind of a catch twenty. Too. Yeah, definitely. They're, they're a little bit old news, but last year you you helped uh, collaborated with a company uh, to produce a three gun competition bag. This seemed to be a huge hit. Um, I believe it won an award here and there for like the best new product or something like that. Um, and before this bag, there was like the only one that and I'm sure there was companies that I'm I'm missing here, but the most popular was like a Safari Land one. But you can never really get everything in there. You kind of had to like disassemble. Probably you had to take the tube off your shotgun because it really wouldn't fit. It wasn't long enough to run it with the shotgun with the tube in there. Uh, your your three gun bag has kind of accomplished this and more, right? Absolutely, it's been it's been very well received. Uh, they sell a lot of them. It to when we started talking about doing this project. They said just do whatever, and, and about a year to design it, and I really took my time with trying to, you know, trying to figure out what all scenarios you would have. Bag, and for me, the biggest part of that bag is the capacity, and the second biggest thing is how easy you can ruck it. I mean, and did that mammoth thing, and you put that pack on, and your stuff in there, you wouldn't even know it was on there. You could ruck for miles. And you wouldn't even know it was there. It's yeah. 
it, it did a great job. You can pretty much fit everything you want in it, and it's very ergonomic. So I'm very happy with it. Yeah, so obviously, I'm assuming you have two stra shoulder straps, right? So you can obviously run it like a pack. You probably have uh, obviously just a handle where you can just pick it up really quick, right? Correct? It's actually correct. You, you have a shoulder strap you can put on or take off. It has a handle that carries like a carry bag. Um, um, it actually has an adjustable backpack uh, rucksack uh, harness to it. So it's it's it actually of uh, one of Voodoo Tactical's uh, mil spec line for outdoor uh, rucking, camping, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So we built that harness from. Yeah. I'm thinking about that all the weight. I mean, if you're running a shotgun with the tube on it, you're running an AR, you obviously got to have, you probably have a few uh, AR mags that are completely loaded up, maybe a couple of drums, some 30 rounders, some 40 rounders with base pads on them. So you're probably getting plus capacity on those. You're running your pistol with probably a few to five mags in there. Um, and you probably have, you know, maybe gloves, eye and ear protection. Man, that thing, it, I can imagine how quick the weight would skyrocket on a pack that can hold all three guns plus gear. All right. And you seem to have done yeah. that where it's still comfortable. Oh, yeah. Well, I just did the hardest, uh, the hardest hell match in uh, St. George. And I shot Troop, and I do this every year. And it's a testament to the bag. And trooper division, if you can put it and fit it in your bag, you can use it. So you can use PCC guns. Uh, you just have to ruck all your ammo and everything in. And there was four of us that got trooper with the ROs. And well, we, we are we are but we shot as ROs with the staff. And our packs were. I had well, let's see. This is what I had in my bag. I had a spare upper, a ten inch upper. I had my long range rifle. I had two pistols, an open pistol and a limited pistol. I had two shotguns, my integrated X-Rail Syscop shotgun. I had my PCC, and then I had all the ammo for all those guns. And, and the pack was 110 pounds. Good gosh. So a half mile in and a half mile out. And it really was not bad at all. I mean, you could stand there, talk with people, having all that weight. Now, I, obviously, you didn't have that kind of weight in that bag to shoot a three gun match. But today, most people drive to their matches. It, it, the days of flying to three gun, are, you might do 5% of your matches where you fly to a three gun match. So you can have all your stuff in your bag and pull up to a stage and pull it all up. Your bag might be 40 pounds, but it's not. I mean, with all your guns in it, you might maybe push 50 pounds, throw some shotgun shells in it and a couple mags for your pistol on rifle and you know you're off to a stage so it's uh it's very economical on that end of it it's efficient on that end of it instead of running out of like two or three different bags going to a stage so yeah i mean i've had a uh recent pack that i carried from work something to be from you know real discreet looking but it's big enough right you can fit uh what do you get 10 and a half inch sbr in there you get pistols multiple pistols, some mags, med kit, you can get all that. But this strap right here, it's just like a, just a single kind of over the, sh over the shoulder kind of strap, it's a single strap. Yeah. This thing wears pretty yeah. good. It don't take long right there on the back of the neck. And I want to take it off. So it's not, I mean, with me, I do silly things. If I have room, I'm going to try to fill it. So I put like everything I could possibly get in here. And now I'm sorry. <laughs> now now I'm starting to feel it, you know, it, it, it's as little as probably wearing it in five minutes and I'll start getting a pain right over the top of my shoulder, wearing it with just a single strap system. It's so funny because I went from three gun where pretty much every three gun match I went to here, either you could drive up to the stage or you could take your three gun cart, right? Like mm -hmm. Atlanta three gun, you can take your three gun cart all over that. 
um, and like Woody's in North Carolina, you can drive up to the stage. The whole squad just drives up to the stage and you get your stuff out your car and go do whatever. And then I went to go do PRS and it's completely different. The terrain is such at these ranges that you cannot use a three gun cart. There's no way you would end up fighting it more than just carrying the stuff. So it doesn't work. You can't drive to it. A lot of times you're parking far away and walking in. So it is very different having to put everything into my bag and you know, you got to have your ammo, you got to have your mags, you got to have your shooting bags in PRS and those weigh a good bit. So between all that, my pack I think is like probably about 40 pounds. My rifle is probably 18 pounds and all that I have to carry. That's a lot for me. It's hard. Yeah. The ammo, the ammo and the mags that, that weighs it, it down pretty bit. Yeah, it's so yeah. different. To, um, you, you start uh, budgeting what you're going to take. You're like, uh, do I really need four beef sticks? No, I can live with two. Like, <laughs> like whereas three gun, I'm like, you know, throw it all in there. I'll take it all because I have a buggy and I like just pile crap in there. It's so different with PRS. I have to like be careful. Like, okay, the knee pads. Well, I'll go ahead and put the knee pads on. Then I don't have to carry them. Yeah. Yeah, man, geez, if you're, if you're going down to the beef sticks, every ounce <laughs> counts, all right? <laughs> that, that's right. That's yeah. why you that said voodoo bag, because I, I, I specifically designed it to be a crossover, so you can use long guns, tripods, spotting coat, skull, both pack really well. It, 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 is, it is the most comfortable backpack or bag I've ever had on my back, and I'm not saying that because I don't need to sell them. In it. I think when I looked at it from a design standpoint, it had to be comfortable no matter what weight was in it. So I'm gonna have go. to look at those maybe then because yeah, I have yeah. a tripod now and I end up with the backpack and care and the rifle slung and carrying the tripod. So yeah. yeah, you can these are over on the Ross Performance website and I'm sure you can also find them on Voodoo Tactical's website because Voodoo Tactical is the company who makes the bag and, and you know so yeah. there you go um uh it's probably a must add if you're one of those people who are deciding whether to take four beef sticks or two if you're one <laughs> of those people who are thinking about that you you invest the money get yourself a good bag i'm telling you, it'll probably be worth its weight in gold uh other than that unless we have any live ones i think we're good over here uh on the live side stephanie says hello uh, if you can survive through it, it sounds like fun. Yeah, that's the skateboard bag. Yeah, so this bag uh, definitely looks. It's it's not. It doesn't have that tactical look. And I guess the company that's the kind of the concept behind it. It doesn't look like you have a rifle in it. It looks like you're almost carrying a skateboard in it. And boy, if uh, boy, I got enough shit in there to get through get through a, a wild a wild couple days. I tell you that. But uh. Uh, yeah, that's the that's the deal. Uh, that's probably not ideal for three gun or PRS competition at all. But there you go, uh, as far as that bag goes. But that's all I have live, Jen. Unless you have any. No, we're good on my end. All right, that'll do it. We'll kind of wind this one down. A wrap uh, to shout outs here. We'll start off with you, Jen. What do you have? All right, shout out to Prime Ammunition. Um, check them out for all your ammunition needs. They have pretty much everything you could possibly want on there including like shotgun shotgun slugs so check them out night force optics um great glass lansang tactical for all your gas gun needs gsl suppressors so that i won't be so obnoxious to the people next to me on the firing line under industries check them out with that awesome uh deal that they have going through february 1st so go to their um, facebook page under industries it's u-n-d-r industries shooters of augusta and sharpshooters of augusta is my local ranges here that support me carbon arms for all your shotgun needs um, for shotgun shell caddies chest rigs all that stuff so that you can quad load with a fast roth shotgun mm -hmm. um, and patriot cases for awesome cases to be able to fly with your guns and all that good stuff boom there you go uh mark what do you have well the only thing i can think of is uh Four roses. Jay Carillo. You know stuff. who Jay Carillo is, right? 
I don't know how he got a sponsorship with Four Roses, but he's been nice to me on that. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> Jeez, they're gonna have to hit him up. Yeah, I, it, it's funny that I don't know. I, I I've done the sponsorship thing for quite a long time, and I start. You know, I'm thinking about companies like that. Like, what do I really, really like? You know, <laughs> hey, if I can get Four Roses sponsorship or sponsors by Chipotle or something like that, man, that'll go. That's that'll crazy. go a decent. That'll that'll be awesome. You know, so you look yeah. at companies outside of almost the shooting industry, and you're like, man, Four Roses is a good deal. Uh, always drink drink responsibly, yeah. though, right? Uh, whatever. Screw that. Absolutely. Now, <laughs> there you go. Um, Shout out to my end, uh, the folks over at Ta- Tactical Shit, uh, shop.tacticalshit.com. We appreciate their su- support over the years. Uh, the folks over at uh, Tandem Cross, if you're kind of into the rim fire steel challenge kind of thing, they have all the parts you need to get hook up those Rugers and those Smith & Wesson rim fire guns. Uh, if you want to email me, theshootersmindset at gmail.com is a good way to do that. Uh, if you're watching on the YouTube side of things, right below the video, you see the yellow subscribe button. Click that every Tuesday at 9 Eastern. We're doing a new episode of the Shooter's Mindset featuring another great guest. I think we have Christmas here coming up. We have a show next week, and then we're going to have a week off for the ho- the Christmas holiday, but then we'll kind of be back at it, and that'll be January, which is kind of always hectic because of SHOT Show. Uh, definitely thanks to Mark for coming on for a second time here, and I think we got through it where we can actually upload this one. <laughs> Uh, this time, and yeah. it'll be available it's for you guys better, to watch but... anytime. <laughs> what was that? I wish the connection was a little better, but... Yeah, you... but I think it was definitely good enough. We definitely heard everything that you were saying. A little laggy, but it wasn't enough to, like, like hit the red button and say, let's let's do this one over again. Yeah. Um, what do we have, folks, over at Gear Nation USA? And lastly... Lastly, who do I got here? I got a little bit of a list here. Folks over at Snag Mag, okay? I haven't I haven't talked about them in a while. Check out Snag Mag for your concealed or if you need a concealed carry spare magazine kind of holster, check out the folks over at Snag Mag. But other than that, that'll do it for episode 245 of the Shooter's Mindset. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight, and we're out of here.